Uh, good morning. Uh, let us discuss about the concept of culture. As an anthropologist, uh, this is what, one of the areas that we are interested in because all human beings possess culture. This is what differentiates humans from non-humans. Only humans possess culture and this is what separates us from the animal world. Now let us define culture. Of course culture is defined in many ways. Some people say this is the uh, man-made portion of the environment. Other people say this is about uh, the way of living of any society. One anthropologist is a British anthropologist who was the first one to give a scientific definition of culture is Sir Edward Burnett Tyler. He published a book in 1871 entitled Primitive Culture. In that book, he mentioned that culture uh, is that complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, law, morals, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society. So let us look at the key words that you mentioned. First, it is man. As I mentioned, only humans possess culture. Uh, the nearest relatives that we have, which are non-human primates such as the chimpanzees, we share a lot of traits with them genetically. However, they do not have culture. For example, language as a portion of culture Chimpanzees, although they have 97% shared genes with humans, do not possess language. Uh, at most, they could uh, give warnings to fellow chimpanzees, but they could not express ideas that were experienced by their ancestor chimpanzees. They could not express ideas that they themselves do not witness. So at most, we call the communication form of chimpanzees as a proto-language, something that still needs to be developed in order to attain the complexity of human communication, which is known as language. The other key word mentioned by Tyler is society or population, because culture refers to something that is shared by a group, at least by two people, but in most instances, more than two, such as Philippine society, for example. So, for example, why do some Filipinos from Tawi-Tawi all the way to Batanes point to certain objects using their lips, such as where is the, uh, where is the, the glass case, and they would use their lips to point to that object. This is sh something shared by Filipinos but not shared by Filipinos with Taiwanese, with Malaysians, with Indonesians, who are our neighboring Southeast Asians. So cultural is, uh, what we call cultural is something shared. Now, uh, culture consists of many concepts such as beliefs, arts, laws, etc. So as anthropologists, we mentioned that there are four domains of culture, everything of which is man-made. This consists of the economic domain, the social domain, the political domain, and the ideational domain, also known as ideological domain. The economic domain consists of food production, distribution, and consumption. The social domain consists of uh, social organizations, kinship and non-kin groups. Uh, the political domain consists of uh, concepts of power, political organizations, decision-making, conflict resolution, and the ideational domain consists of non-tangible aspects of culture such as religion, worldview, aesthetics, music, arts, etc. But all of these four domains are interlinked with one another. For example, the concept of relasyong magsuki is both an economic and a social cultural trait. 
uh, when you change one aspect of culture, one domain of culture, it brings about changes in other domains. And this is one critique that we have in some so social scientists who do not look at culture as an integrated whole. For example, some economists introduce economic reforms without looking at its political implications. What are its impact on the family, etc., etc. So we may, we may say that culture is an integrated whole. Another characteristic of culture is that all cultures change. There is no such a thing as a static culture. Cultures that have refused to change eventually become extinct. Even very traditional cultures such as Chinese culture has changed through time. The different Chinese cultures have changed with the changing dynasties in China. Of course, some parts of culture change at a more rapid rate than others. Based on analysis of patterns of culture, the material culture changes at a faster rate, such as our clothes, architectural styles, technology, but the ideology changes at a slower rate. So values remain practically the same. For example, Japanese culture is very modernized technologically, but the values are very traditional. Now, we may ask, uh, what are the component parts of a cultural system? All cultures would have an environmental setting, a space where that culture is practiced or where it originally came from. If we talk about Philippine culture, we're referring to the environmental space known as the Philippine Archipelago. The other component part of culture is group or society. All cultures would have culture bearers. Who are the members of that culture who practice the said culture? If we talk about Philippine culture again, we're talking about Filipinos, whether they are found in the Philippines or they're spread out in the world. The third uh, component part would be material culture. All types of cultures would have material expressions, the things that people fashion and make, such as clothes, houses, buildings, etc. The fourth uh, component part would be uh, all human activities are part of culture. So this includes economic activities, social activities, political activities, religious activities, etc. And the fifth part would be cultural tradition. Strictly speaking, cultural tradition also refers to human activities and behavior, but these are activities that are practiced through time and across generations. Because human activities may be in the form of fads. For example, Jejemon culture is something that is practiced by some segment of the Filipino youth but we're not too sure whether that practice will continue in the future. But those practices that persist, such as fiestas, Filipino religiosity, they're very much a part of cultural tradition. Now, you may ask, where does language fit in into, that, into those five component parts? In my point of view, language transcends the five because all of these five parts can better be expressed and can only be expressed through language. The space we call as Philippines is largely a product of our linguistic understanding of what the term Philippines means. Even the group we know as Filipinos, so they speak Philippine languages, including uh, Tagalog, Ilocano, Kapampangan, and other spoken languages in the Philippines, but also including Filipino Sign Language, which is the language of deaf Filipinos. Um, so, 
language, as I mentioned, is universal in humanity. All humans possess language. Uh, many humans have a uh, spoken language, but there are segments among humans that use a visual language. And there are different visual languages in the world. American Sign Language is different from Filipino Sign Language. It's different from British Sign Language, from Chinese Sign Language, Japanese Sign Language, etc. Now, what is the relationship between language and culture? We believe that there is a dialectical relationship between the two. Language is the soul of a culture. Uh, you have a certain affinity to your own culture. You have a certain ethnic identity because you possess a certain language. The differences in language brings about differences in linguistic communities as well as in ethnic communities. We call a certain person as a Tagalog because he or she speaks Tagalog. And we call a certain person as uh, Fukienese, for example, because he or she speaks Fukienese. Uh, among uh, deaf Filipinos, uh, he or she is identified also by the language that he or she uses as his or her mother tongue. Most Filipinos use Filipino Sign Language as their mother tongue and are therefore identified by this linguistic uh, feature. Um, because different languages are not similar with one another, there are certain uh, terms that one could not capture because a different language group organizes the world differently. A typical example is if you translate uh, uh, pang ilan ka sa mga magkakapatid, uh, this is difficult to translate in English because English speakers do not give importance to the hierarchy among siblings or within society. Uh, they do not count by who is the eldest, who is the youngest, who is the second, who is the third. Uh, because different languages give importance to different things. Um, the, um, the American anthropologist Franz Boas called this as the concept of cultural emphasis. When Franz Boas uh, did field work among Eskimos, he asked Eskimos, what is your translation? What is the Eskimo word for snow? And Eskimos had a difficulty because they have a different word for different types of snow. There is a different term for hard snow as opposed to soft snow. There is a different term for transparent versus translucent versus opaque snow. There is a different term for snow that is about to fall and snow that is already in on the ground. Of course, we understand this because the Eskimo world revolves around snow. If you don't know which is hard or soft, then you cannot survive that particular culture. You might sink into a soft uh, uh, ice within the environment. If you don't know what is transparent versus opaque, you cannot make windows into an igloo. Uh, so, according to Boas, the number of synonyms of a certain concept in a particular language means that that concept is very important to a particular culture. Let us look at the Philippine example. Uh, if we translate rice into Tagalog, again, we will have a difficulty. If it is rice that is uh, still growing as a plant, we call it palay. If it is already husked, we call it bigas. If it is being cooked, we call it sinaing. If it is already cooked rice, we call it kanin. 
If it is cold rice, we call it bahaw. If it is fried rice, we call it sinangag. If it is burnt rice, we call it tutong. So there is not one word of rice in Tagalog. This means Philippine society is based on rice culture. Uh, so we could go on and on with examples. Now, one other linguistic relationship between language and culture was identified by uh, Edward Sapir and his student Benjamin Lee Wirth. According to him, uh, they de developed this concept of Wirthian hypothesis that humans do the things they do because of language, because language is organized differently according to different societies. For example, the English language is very racist because in the English language, uh, they distinguish differences among races as well as sexes. For example, he and she, uh, man, woman are distinguished. But in Austronesian languages, such as languages in the Philippines, uh, distinction among sexes is not so important. Again, these are some of the traits that we see in the relationship between language and culture. So, is it possible for a certain group of people not to have culture? Again, that's impossible. All humans have a culture. Um, all Filipinos have a culture known as Philippine culture but I'm not saying that we have a homogeneous culture because there are different cultures even within the Philippine setting because there are more than 170 languages in the Philippines there may be more than 170 cultures in the Philippines and with each culture, they, there may be subcultures. For example, among Filipino youth, depending on their particular uh, orientation in terms of music styles, sexual preferences, their uh, social lect or how they speak as a, as a community, again, this would create different cultures. And this diversity of cultures is something to celebrate. It's not a cause for worry because this is what makes us human. Life would be very boring if we only have the same language. And we should respect each one's language. We should respect each one's culture. 